Hi, this is Jindo with my mighty sword, and our subject today is Manjusri, cutting through ignorance, cutting the world not in two, but into one beyond one. Because Manjusri is the Bodhisattva who signifies wisdom. And wisdom in Buddhist, Buddhism is to be wise enough to get beyond this self other distinction to find the big flowing and interconnection that ties all things together in one great dance it's the dance of emptiness and this is what manjusri symbolizes now as we go through all the different bodhisattvas we'll find that each one has come to represent an aspect of our practice of the teachings canon with compassion Manjusri with wisdom because this wisdom is at the heart of what we do as a matter of fact it's the heart of the heart sutra which is the heart of the great perfection of wisdom sutra the prajna paramita sutra which is the sutra that talks about this great dance that's all empty it's all wondrous Sometimes they call it the void, but that doesn't mean it ain't nothing. When you can be with the flow, when you can drop the hard frictions and divisions between yourself and the rest of the world, you go with the flow. As a matter of fact, you're just the flowing. And this is the perspective on emptiness that Manjusri represents it's such a an easy opening to what is that even this world of ignorance and samsara seems just to be this wonderful flowing and even what they call nirvana is just empty and thus when we sit zazen, we come to taste, we come to be this wonderful interflowing. I think Nat Han talks about interbeing, but I like to talk about something that's even more vibrant than that, because being sounds like something stagnant and, and frozen. It's an interbeing, it's interflowing that we taste in the Zen Hall. And for that reason, in many Zen Halls, not ours, where we have a statue of Buddha, but in many Zen Halls, Manjusri is enshrined, riding astride his lion. That's to show how tough he is. Holding his sword that cuts the world, again, not in two. It cuts the world into one. It cuts the world into one beyond one. That is what Manjusri represents. Now why is this so important in our practice? Many of you have heard me say it time and again, but it's worth saying once more. The friction between yourself and the world, the way you want and the way the world is, there's somehow often a, a dichotomy of friction there, a, a kind of a war between you and the world. But this practice lets us find it all come together into just this wonderful flowing with things the way they are. It takes practice. It takes sitting to taste this, but once you do, it's not something that's only on the zazen cushion. You can taste that flowing, that allowing, that being in all of life. That's what Manjusri represents. And he's dedicated. That's one reason he's in the monks' hall. He's so, so dedicated to practice, to sitting. He's sincere. All the bodhisattvas are. They don't give up. They keep charging forward even though he knows that it's all right here. Manjusri taught that 
The enlightenment we're running after is empty too. It's all that same dance that we are just dancing right here. When we can find it, when we can taste it. Now, of course, we shouldn't put too many words on these things. I've, I sometimes say it's like the difference between talking about ice cream and tasting the cool sweetness on your own tongue. So let's grab our swords and get on those cushions and do the Manjusri dance. Shall we sit with that? Oh, I left my belt on the other side of the room, so let's just start sitting, okay?